Yes, yes. Come hither. I had foreseen your arrival in the bones. <laughs> Gather close, and I will tell you a tale that has not yet been told. It is a story of brothers. Ordinary men with but one slight difference. They prefer to spend their time in a fantasy world. Eric, the explorer. Scott, the lover. And his older brother, Craig, the sage. Brian, the father. And his younger brother, Ross, the painter. Our story begins on the 23rd of November, in the year 2004. The launch of the World of Warcraft. Away from keyboard. closer to playing the game. I'm a highly visual person. You know, I do a lot of painting and visual stuff. So when I play this game, it's just another world. It's just another thing for me to look at. I mean, that's one of the interests. And not only do I get to look at this cool world, I get to take my character, customize them to a certain regard, and it's much like writing my story within this story. Mongrel the Druid Torn. I've decided to play a druid, which is actually a being of nature. Yeah, I'm a druid. Druid, yeah. I put the mop in the way, cause I'm an idiot. It's like you and your friends going to the park, you know what I mean? Or you and your friends going to see a movie. Well, this is a visual, this is interaction, this is role playing. And in reality, it's kind of some good organization skills, I think. Despite my laziness on the chair, I actually get out of it every once in a while. In this game, I can go wherever I want. It's a little more freedom in these games, I guess is what it is. So you don't smell like you've been playing games all night. I want to play the game, but I know that how sucked into it I got into before. And I can tell you that it caused a lot of problems and, and personal relationships, especially with my now, you know, fiance. So when you look at one of these games, you go, wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like something I could really do to relax and enjoy and unwind. But at the same time, you really got to be careful not to let it take over. So what are you, do, what are you doing right now with your character? I'm doing quests, man. Yeah? What's going to be different? What's going to be different this time is I'm, I'm going to let it be a fun game. I will enjoy it and allow myself to enjoy it. But I'm going to give myself a, a timer, you know, whether it's an hour or two hours a day. Yeah, right. We'd, well, I mean, this is the test. We'll see what happens. But I'm not going to play it, you know, um, when my fiance is home or if I've got a family event. I'm not going to let it cut into that. We forsaken are at war with the Lich King's army of the scourge, Necromantic. You know, as I'm being videotaped about this, kind of makes me feel a little uncomfortable for sure. Why is that? Because just like society in itself probably would think, dork. The average gamer in my mind, I'm thinking of somebody in their, uh, you know, mid-teens. Probably not having a girlfriend. 
Cinco. Gamers are so stereotyped. Your yeah, sound card works perfectly. People that play video games are stereotyped as nerds. <laughs> Stereotypes are based upon a form of truth. We're all really fat, and we all have carpal tunnels. Some socially ineptness, I would say. I think there's like an image that a lot of us are just, you know, we sit in our parents' house all day and play games, don't have social lives. Girls in gaming hasn't been very popular, at least until recently. I must admit, I am a gamer. Very open about yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love talking to people about it. I don't try to hide the fact that I play World of Warcraft all the time. I spend most of my time at work talking about it because most of my coworkers play too. I'm not embarrassed at all that I'm a gamer. Out here, you have to be yourself. You have to do what society wants you to do. And while you're in your own little game world, you can do whatever you want. There's nothing wrong with gaming. It's a game. Some people might think you're too old to play games, but you're really not. The association with games as games being a kid only thing, I think there's a stigma there. And I was surprised to find out after the first couple of years of gaming how many people that are in their 30s and 40s and, and even older really game. I don't really see video games necessarily as a societal negative. There is the stereotype around video games that you're a geek, you're a nerd. Maybe people perceive that culturally it's a negative. I don't see it that way. I'm a geek. I play video games. It has been two months since the World of Warcraft launch. So what do you do, Ryan? I destroy casters. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 28. I'm a real estate agent, or at least I was up until about 30 days ago. <laughs> 30 days ago, I haven't been doing much real estate, but that's all right. I'm gonna get re-motivated here shortly. I got two kids and a wife. Married for four and a half years. Is it four and a half years? Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half years. <laughs> got a four-year-old daughter and a seven-month-old. I like my online games. Not online games, really just this. I have several opinions about online games. I think in my household, it's a huge waste of time. What does it do for you? I just get to be pretend someone for a little bit, you know? Just like, you know, if I wanted to be a movie star, per se, I get to kind of be a movie star in, in this world. He uses it as a coping skill. Since he bought World of Warcraft, I can think of one day, one day, that I think he hasn't played it. When do you know when to call it quits for a day? Yeah, that's, that's probably the hardest thing about the game. I don't know when to call it quits. I should call it quits probably when my wife is waking up first or second time. Comes in, flickers on, the lights on and off. She just pulls the modem on me. They go irate. They have gone as far as throwing a chair at her, not at her. At the sink. This game has caused us, I mean, a lot of problems. I mean, yeah. right before Christmas, he would not stop playing that game. I mean, mm -hmm. he'd get up at like 11.30, he'd get on the game almost immediately after he wolfed food down, and he'd play until like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Do you, you guys have a mage? Do you guys have a... Is there any mage? And I think he plays it too much when our kids are around and stuff. Um, Kayla came to me a couple weeks ago and said, you know, Mommy, Daddy was playing his game all day and ignoring me. I'm a pretty proud parent, and I think when my kids start realizing it, you know, you know like right now, I don't think they can feel the, the, because they do get some neglect by me playing this, totally. I'm not gonna lie about that, and that's probably the harshest thing, because I pride myself on being a good parent the most of anything. Anything in this world, I want to be a good parent. And when that suffers, then that's lame, so. Is it really that important? Is, is always the, what I have a conversation with Brian about. It. Is it that important? Yeah. And it it's, seems that it is, actually. So that's the problem. It has been four months since launch. So tell me about the dynamics of the whole guild thing, what you're thinking. Brian's kind of on the same level, but Craig's still kind of behind. 
Scott is kind of there. Like, I shouldn't be at the, the zones I have been recently. I mean, I'm 48. There's zones I should be moving on to with other 48 pluses, you know what I mean? Yeah. Would you say comparatively with you versus other players, do you take this game more serious than other players? No. I don't think so. I think I just know how things work, and I just... Not more than anyone else. I'm just saying, like... I know what I'm doing out there, and I know the people I need to be grouped with to get things done. And fortunately, this is a fun way of getting things done. So. Not so it's easy in real life sometimes, but there's less hassle. The, the objective's right in front of you, really. You have more control over it, I think. What do you tell people you do during your free time? Like, if you're playing this game, do you say, hey, guys, I'm going to go play video games? Yeah, totally. That's I'm totally cool. honest, dude. Like, with my girlfriend, dude, she knows for real, dude. Oh, you guys are dating now? Yeah, for sure. Tight, dude. Yeah. So, anyways, like, she'll, I'll tell her straight up that I'm playing my game. That's cool. Yeah, she doesn't care. That's cool, dude. She'd rather that than, you know, like, going out and partying all the time and drinking, because I'm not even into that anymore anyways. <laughs> I'm a grown-ass man, dude, you know what I mean? I have nothing to prove to anybody at this point in my life. What time is it right now? Approximately 1.57. Actually, it's not that bad. Ah, why am I playing online games? Well, partially it's just cheap entertainment. I can't afford to drive out anywhere or hit bar hopping. I mean, the main thing for me is just to have fun and be comfortable in life. For 15 bucks a month plus an internet connection, I can go wild. I can interact with all my friends. It's a way to release your inhibitions. You can act however you want. They don't know the real you, so you don't even have to be who you are. You can create a persona. You can come home, turn off reality, and live in a fantasy world. I'm a lazy daydreamer guy. I like experiencing things that I can't experience in this world. And being in games like Warcraft and other MMOs I've played gives you a whole chance of a whole different world. When I've had a rough day at work and I don't feel like dealing with people, I can go off and fly around the Outland for two hours just farming. That, to me, is a real freedom. 
to escape into a game for a couple hours, I don't see any harm in that. No matter what you do, almost everyone has some type of escapism, whether watching TV, playing video games, reading books. While you escape, know that you have to come back to your life, your problems, and deal with it. You can't escape forever. You're deluding yourself on that one. excuses why the game is really cool and it is fun, but it still is an escape, dude, you know? I'm 22 and I make a thousand dollars a month or whatever, you know? That's not cool with the things I want to do in life. People that don't have money in real life can go in the game and be wealthy and buy items and have things and experience those same psychological rewards of having money and assets and items and things. And when you're in a situation where your needs and desires are fulfilled day after day after day in a very easy way because attaining these things within the game is super easy compared to how it is in real life. It, it's no wonder why people just, just get sucked into these and play them day after day after day. So what have you started to do? What have I started to do? I just want to step it up in, in my talent area, you know. I got a thing for art and I want to step that up so I can make money at and be happy in life doing what it is I like to do. This is the, the return of the artist. Return, bro. How about the beginning? The beginning. Tell me a little bit about you guys. You and Ross have recently changed, created some alternate characters. Yeah, I think myself. both of us got a little burnout. Now they're hitting burnout stage. Or you could say it's the end game. I think it's because they play six, seven hours a day and they don't have girlfriends, they're not exercising. Ross in particular, on top of those two things, doesn't like his career at all, not getting paid very well. And so he uses it really more for an escape, whereas myself, I feel more of it's a reward. Mm -hmm. Major difference, you know. If, if they have a bad day in the game, they have a bad day in life. I seem to go through these phases where I'm not doing what I should be doing, basically. It's like working out, exercising, eating healthy. And I was until I moved in here to the new house or whatever, and then we got this game, and so everything kind of got put on hold. Anything going on in your personal life that's changed recently? Um, well, than the fact that I'm extremely poor. <laughs> <laughs> and then it all came pouring down this month with all my bills and stuff, and I was just, I'm dry as a bone, man. I feel like I'm letting myself down because I know I need to be out there making money. Mm -hmm. But yet, here I am, caught up with my lines, dude. I'm like, oh, dude, so much fun. I think he's. Well, to be honest, I, I don't. I think he's running away still. You know what I mean? From all of his problems, our reasons are similar somewhat. But I'm not really running away from anything. I'm kind of content in where I am and what I'm doing. My job is okay, you know, it's not the best job in the world, but I make good money doing it. The question becomes, how many times do they have to go through, whether it takes three months or four months to cycle, to realize that this game or escapism is really what it is? Yep. How many times do they have to do that before they realize it's only going to temporarily solve the problem? Childhood was great, growing up was fun, you're exploring life. And then now I hear him where I gotta get straight to business and I'm all, ah, yeah. I don't wanna grow up. By starting a new character, it's actually very disappointing for me seeing him as my friend and a roommate. Whereas, for example, yesterday, he should have been working on paintings and, and doing whatever. Instead, he created a new character and now he's right back where he was two months ago and probably will be for the next two months. You know? As a friend to Ross, what do you think he could do better? Quit playing the game completely. He's in a position in his life where he needs to really get on the ball and start doing something. 
And I mean, so do I. You know, I'm just like, all or nothing, you know? I, yeah. I'm either playing or I'm not. And that's kind of how it is. I guess maybe I'm like, maybe I'm just playing too much. They're either gonna stop playing or it's a breaking point for something to give. The positive thing would be to give playing as much and venture into something else. It was my third child that got addicted to an online game called EverQuest. Three months after playing it, it started affecting his real life. He ended up quitting his job and then eventually getting evicted from his place where he was living. I told him he could come home and stay so he could get back on his feet. And I took him to a therapist right away. And we went several times. And finally the psychologist said to me right in front of him, he said, you should just be glad he's not addicted to drugs and alcohol. millions upon millions of people in the United States alone, globally, many, many more, who are compulsively or excessively using the computer. It's not studied as well as it should be, and it's not exactly clear what to do with these folks when you're trying to treat them. They diagnosed him as being depressed and having a schizoid disorder. Schizoid uh, personality disorder, generally it's characterized by somebody who's very isolated, doesn't need to have much interaction with other people to get satisfaction in life. He was using the diagnosis that they made as an excuse as to why he didn't need to get better. It's not always clear which occurred first. Did the compulsive computer use cause a person to become isolated and alone and then they become depressed? Or did they become depressed and then found some safe way to socialize through the computer? He didn't care about the future anymore. He didn't care about what he was going to do when he grew up. He just wanted to go and play the game. Say, for example, I'm seeing somebody who's using the computer 40 hours a week for gaming, and they also happen to be very, very depressed. The psychiatric community would say, we got to treat the depression. But part of the treatment is to get the person out and functioning again in society and going out and working and having friendships and relationships which is exactly what the computer is being substituted for in this case. The best thing about online games is the people. The community aspect of it just drew me in. It's a sense of community. It's just like a community. It's a community. It's just like a basketball team or a soccer team. You hang out together, you practice together. Playing online games lets me meet people from all over the world. From Texas, Atlanta, California, Nevada, Germany, Japan, France, Australia, Canada. You don't even have to step outside your door or meet other people in person. You can get online and talk to people that you'd never ever meet in their normal course of your life. It's not just about the game when it comes to a massive online community of people. You're not logging on to play the game after three months. You're logging on to play with your friends playing a game. It's not kickball, but it might as well be. That community that is created through those kind of interactive games, it probably fills a big void, right? But see, it comes down to the basic human need of being connected with others. But why not be connected with real life people? It's not just a game. It's, it's the building and establishing of relationships, creating social groups. It's everything that's involved in real life. And I think a lot of professionals just don't realize the extent that these things exist within the game. I suppose we could say, well, at least they're connecting somehow. And so that they're not withering away. That's true. But it's still not really a healthy life, no. I think it's a slower evolving relationship online than it is in real life. But I think the friendships can become just as strong. You have bonds, you have loving emotions, you have anger, you have everything that you experience in real life within the game. That being said, these relationships for the most part are, are illusionary. And you don't realize this while you're playing, but you realize it once you leave the game. And once you leave the game, your idea is that you're, you'll be continuing your relationships with these people, you'll still be emailing them, you'll still be talking to them. And it's amazing how quickly these people evaporate. These friendships that you thought were real and based on real things, even if you people that you spoke with every day, in a very short amount of time, almost all of them will dissipate. I have more friends online than I do in real life, because, but 
I feel like I know them. It's just a great way to meet people. I mean, I met a bunch of real life friends even on my server. I've met people that I'm probably going to stay in contact with for the rest of my life. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you, you can meet the people in the game, you can, you can meet them in real life, but you have something in common right off the bat. It's, it's, a, it's a camaraderie, it's a, it's a brotherhood, it's, it's a nice, beautiful thing. Of our story. So what do you think about the patcheroo, Scooroo? Uh, I don't know. I just started playing again. It seems to be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Scott, just saw him. I hear probably an aggro all of this. Sorry, I don't freak out and play every day, all day. Man, I've been here once, dude. I've been here none of dude. People go in there and they put hours and hours and hours into the computer and maybe 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week is not unusual, just gaming. Gaming is a very selfish thing. Gaming is all about me. It's all about neglecting the time that my friends want to spend with me, neglecting the time that my wife wants to spend with me. It's very much about me, 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 those instant rewards. It becomes a relationship with the computer. The computer becomes as important to them as many people are to them. So I think there are a lot of parallels in terms of how uh, a, an obsessive compulsive gamer can impact his own life and the life of, of the people that he loves that are important to him. Damn. What do your family and friends think about gaming? Uh, a lot of them don't really understand that I'm playing with other people. My mom never really approved with it. I always thought it was a waste of time. My grandma thinks that. They think that I'm just sitting there in my room all day long just Typing away. Your family catches you, you're up still awake 7 o'clock the next morning, like 12 hours after they last saw you, and you're still playing the game. Family, they just don't understand. Like the song says, parents just don't understand. <laughs> My friends think it's weird. Why are you wasting your life playing on your computer? It's another reason to say, what, why, why aren't you going out and meeting more women? <laughs> why, why are you always hanging out with Scott? <laughs> A lot of times, dads and kids, you know, the, you hear about them being not in touch with the generation or something. His friends love the fact that you played your dad. A lot of them say that they wish they had a dad that would play with them. Up until somewhat recently, I was seeing someone, and they didn't like that. You know, from the beginning, I said, you know what? Friday nights, I'm playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> Even if you're having couple problems, like you're not getting along too well at all, just play it. World of Warcraft together and you'll be fine. Yeah, if you're fighting, you should play. We can go on a raid together and, you know, fight in game and duel in game, <laughs> take out actual real life frustrations out in the game, and then log out and then everything's fine. It's something that we share together that we can do together. It's not the sole part of our relationship, it's not the defining factor, yeah. but it is a part. I think. Yeah. I think it's our biggest common ground. Yeah. It probably made our relationship a lot smoother that we played together <laughs> than, than had we not. People don't understand the concept of how we can sit there and play video games together and call that quality time. Compromise, compromise. It, there's no other way to date a gamer. <laughs> Immediately I feel ignored, and I just feel like I might not see him for the next couple hours, at least. I know the relationship has probably suffered in some ways, but in other ways too, it's like, you kind of have to have your own free time and time to be able to do your own thing. 20 minutes after he told me he was stopping Warcraft, he started playing Diablo! 20 minutes later. So yes, I don't care if you stop playing Evercrest, Warcraft, Diablo, Final Fantasy 1, 2, or 20, he was immediately on back on another game. You know, we've been together for so long, you don't have that like raw passion you do in the beginning stages. But it's cool because if you want to read, I can go play. And then when I'm done for a couple hours, it's like we have our time together, you kind of enjoy it more. Versus always sitting in the same room, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Do you feel like it's uh, ever hindered or taken away from your activities? Or... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, you don't want to do anything or you don't have any suggestions, I'm going to do my own thing. The mind doesn't function on this, in this world when he's in his online gaming world. If there's anything that you didn't get a chance to communicate or you want to communicate? Craig 
if you're listening right now. Um, and to everybody, it is just a game. There is, even if there isn't a pause, what's the worst thing that can happen? You have family, friends, and life outside the game. And if you don't pay attention to that, they might be gone. And you'll regret it later. So have fun, but don't take too much time sucking your life away into your computer game. grow older. The other night when my brother called me up and wanted to play, uh, I didn't feel like playing because my roommate, who I've talked about before, all he does is play. It's been bothering me and you know last couple times from coming home from work, you know, and he's had the day off, he hasn't done anything around the house. What made you decide to keep trucking? I was close, I was just sitting on the border of reaching my max level. And for him to wake up uh, when I woke up to go to work and play for eight and a half hours and then play even longer and then play when you get there for another three hours is ridiculous. You ever think this uh, game gets uh, interferes with your relationship with your roommate? No. Not at all? I don't think it would. It doesn't bother me if he plays. I don't think it bothers him if I play. If not, too fucking bad. It's my life, dude. I pay rent. I want to kick him in his ass, you know what I mean? I literally want to kick his ass, beat him up, or get beat up trying. I don't know. Like, I want to just tell him that, you know, I'm worried about him. He's so talented at what he does, and I don't even think he realizes it. And then when he shows people his work, you know, people are so stunned and, and taken back by it. And it makes him feel good. I know it does. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It makes me feel good as mm -hmm. his friend mm -hmm. to see him get the respect and the props, you know, that totally. he gets from other people. When he's not doing it, it makes me mad, you know, especially when I see him doing nothing. Great, are you kidding me, dude? What? You're still all... How do the online games let me escape reality? They just let me shred. In reality, you're not allowed to beat the living crap out of anybody. You're not allowed to kill anybody. But in game, I can snipe somebody back. I mean, it's a matter of what I want. I got a nasty ass tiger, and I'm not afraid to use him. You want to rumble? Eat my shorts! Sick them! That's the way it is in game. You, it's, that's how I escape reality. In reality, I'm stuck in a fucking wheelchair sitting in front of a computer screen. In game, I'm charging across the arctic tundra. I'm swimming beneath the sea. I'm flying through the fucking mountain ranges. I'm seeing the world in a way I cannot afford or that I will be able to do in reality. Most of the world is not designed for easy access to a wheelchair. In game, I can go anywhere in game I want. computer offers a solution to dealing with time, finding relationships, and uh, dealing with one's own emotions. The online game is part of the human interaction. If I didn't have that, I'd have, I would go insane without getting out. Now the problem is if you suddenly cut off access to the computer, what happens is now the person has just lost their primary relationship, their, one of the most important relationships in their life. Secondly, they've lost the way they're dealing with their aggressive impulses. And lastly, they now have 30 or 40 more hours a week to fill doing something. And you see uh, 
a tremendous amount of rage is unleashed oftentimes, either directed at oneself or directed out at the world. Is there a wheelchair cost more than some most used cars? If for the really good ones that were if you want to be able to use it as a bike, yeah. Of course I'm better. Medical medical cost is for someone that's necessity in life would be is exorbitant. Yeah. And the game lets me relieve my stress of it. It's like if I didn't have that or my ability to read fan fiction online, I'd kill somebody. If I lose my internet completely, I'm gonna kill somebody. It was just a fuck who's disconnecting my cable. I see people do shit I want to do, and it's like, I can't do it without a bunch of extra help. I mean, Christ, I live in Phoenix. Salt River's right next to us. I have never been tubing because it's too much of a goddamn pain in the ass to get my ass down. Now I can't do that kind of shit because I can't get down the bank of the river, and I can't get on the tube. And if something goes wrong, I'm SOL because I can't get the hell out of the river if it, something goes wrong halfway down the thing. I mean, not unless somebody's following me in a freaking boat with my wheelchair and et cetera, it ain't gonna happen. I don't want to play anymore, man. Man, it's over. So what are you gonna seek as an alternative? Is there a reason behind what you're doing? This is like a cycle. It's like the same process from one game to the next, and it's just reached that stage where I'm bored with it. Now it's just 22 years old, man. It's like. I have other dreams and aspirations that I haven't been doing for a while, partly because I've been caught up in playing these games f forever. So, Sky, what's going on with you, man? Just uh, trying to enjoy life. Still working at the same place. Still uh, doing the same stuff. Still working out. That's cool. So, what do you think about online gaming? For me, I yeah. think it's ridiculous, actually. <laughs> That's fine. I was just saying, no, I don't want to play anymore. No, he still plays. He just limits himself, dude, for a little bit better. Um. Anyways, yeah, well, I hope you have a really happy birthday. So, Ross, you started to, decided to pick it up again, eh? Oh, God, here you go again. Ah, uh, for a little bit. Here and there. Classic question people ask is how many hours a week do you spend gaming? And really that's not a fair question. The, the question is, is how does the time you spend gaming affect your life? How was your day? I don't really care about playing anymore. Why is that? more important things to do in life. Like make money. Or else the world seems to fucking care. I want to make a change in my life. And guess what? It cost me money to make a change. My frustration after a day of bank to bank trying for loans. So here I am working to take the frustration out. So what do you think brought you back to the game, buddy? Um, I think what brought me back into the game was a day of complete boredom. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think there was just nothing I really wanted to do except sit on my lazy ass and play video games for a little while, actually. How's your, your artwork going? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, meeting some people, or I'm going to meet someone, hopefully, to try and hang in a gallery. I actually stopped playing the game for a while, and then, like I said, I got completely bored with it, and then, I don't, I don't know how long it's been now, I guess, since we started playing again, but when we started on the new server, we were playing a lot. Are you seeing anybody right now? Nope. Single. I don't know, it would be nice, dude, to have like, a girlfriend, I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
I've never had a serious girlfriend. Ever. I don't want to analyze it right now. I just want to play it. Part of my major thing is the decision on what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Because right now I just work an average job, play video games all the time. How's work? It's all right. Can't wait to get out of there, dude. And uh, go back to school. Get my teaching certificate. So is that I really, 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 really want to do that. Play a lot more in the last week than I really have since the end of the game at least. When I have some free time, it's okay, I can put this time towards accomplishing some small goals I have, or I can play a game. Me growing up the way I was, life was fun, so it's like, uh, why not keep it that way? So my easiest way to have fun is to play the game sometimes. And uh, with these games, it's always ongoing. There's no end, so it's always, you kind of define your career as in the game. So what are you doing, Ross? Tell me. What do you mean, what am I doing? Playing the game. I feel pushed by my abilities sometimes. It might be cocky or conceited, but I feel that I can do a lot of different things. So it's like, well, what do I decide on? If I give all myself to art and I have the music I want to do in the back of my head, and the art thing doesn't work out, well then it's going to be hard to realize, ah oh, shit, I did all this for the art, and now really it's the music that I'm all thinking about. I really don't know. It's really hard. Probably because I haven't seen that before, you know. I haven't had a good job. I haven't had big paychecks. I just, just a simple person. Simple means. So now it's time to discipline myself. Three years since the World of Warcraft launch. Ross moves to Glendale to live with his brother Brian, his recently divorced brother Brian. There it comes. Oh, I bought the house purely because of the pool, the summer bar, and uh, the little golf. The little pretty out of golf or whatever in the house. So. You love it here? Yeah, I love it here. Love it here. Don't want to leave though sometimes. Yep. Just want to stay here at the house, play the game, relax. What has changed over the last year? Um, quite a bit, actually. Bad thing was the wife wanted to visit mom for her graduation party and ended up staying there. And now we're in the end stages of divorce. The gaming probably had an issue, you know, late nights, she goes to bed. I'm up till 2 a.m. playing the game. Spend less and less time with her, in this kind of a sense. And not look out for her needs, when it, you know, because gaming is, I'm realizing, pretty selfish act. I moved up here with a brother who had just gotten over a divorce. You know, he lost his kid, and it was a really ugly experience. I didn't have anyone, so the best thing was just to stick together and party at night and play games during the day. How does gaming affect your relationship with her boss? Well, that's probably all my relationship with Ross is right now, is gaming. The relationship is generally a gaming relationship. I seem to be the freaking broken record saying, get a job, get a job, get a job. It's been nine months, what the hell? I was a day at Target one day in the deli, and then I quit after the first day. He doesn't really have anything except himself and his no. family. And I'm, I'm now I'm turning that back into material shit, but he doesn't. He's got his car, and that's it. It's hard when people who I know who have some kind of belief and potential for me or what I should be doing. Granted, there's things I probably could be doing with my time, like maybe I should be doing a painting right now. I just don't beat myself up about it, really. I can, some people can't live with the guilt that they played so much. He's making excuses for himself. That's all it is. He's really not becoming the man he wants to be. He's still hiding and running, just like I am. There is a number of proposals out there for what we should call compulsive computer use, both in terms of even the title of the disorder, but also what are the criteria we're gonna use. First, the use has to be excessive. I play video games for eight hours a day. It's not strange for me to play nine hours straight if I get in a good run or, you know, 10, 11 hours, I'll play it straight. The other is it has to be creating real problems in your life. When I play the game, I 
I keep comp- I instantly judge myself, find myself guilty of not not growing. Where does your artwork stand? That takes a lot of time, a lot of commitment. And unfortunately, I guess the art has been the sacrificial lamb and it all. People are generally aware when they have problems. They just don't know what to do with it because that is their life at that point. How do you restart you know, your life? When do you think it'll be time to stop playing video games? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm happy. I'm happy from playing the game. It, it does give me some kind of satisfaction in life. I don't think I'll ever quit. Probably, maybe not until I get like another... Yeah, that's a tough ass question. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's tough. I know I don't want to quit. I'd like to control it, but I don't know when. Yeah, I can't even answer that question. I'm like stumbling trying to answer. So, oh, my palms are a little sweaty too. What does that mean? <laughs> I went over to his apartment and I was trying to get him to come to the door. And you know, I'm hollering at him and you know, I knew he was in there because it was locked. And then I went around and pounded on his bedroom window and he didn't come, didn't come. And you know, I just said, well, you know, I'm not gonna break in. He's gonna have to come to the door tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving. Then I went home and I had to work because I worked the third shift. So I got done like 10 in the morning and I went over there then from work and this was Thanksgiving day. And so when I got there, he didn't answer the door again and I knew there was something wrong. And I knew I had to be in there and see what was going on. I wasn't gonna call the cops. So I went home and got the um, crowbar and the screwdriver and I broke in and when I got in there, he was sitting in his bedroom in front of the computer in his chair, and he had a rifle, and I looked at the computer, and the EverQuest game was on it. I heard about Liz, uh, Liz and her son who committed suicide, so I, I heard a lot of things in the game boards, people were just making fun of her, and, you know, and I'm thinking how terrible that situation was. So I, I tracked her down and called her on the phone and just spent a couple hours talking to her. She just told me her whole story. I wanted to let other people know that they weren't the only ones going through this. And so that's when I decided I would start an organization for gamers and family members and friends. At that time, she was talking about starting Online Gamers Anonymous. I told her, hey, I want, I want in this. I want to help you do this. A lot of people were worried about the violent nature of the games and the sex in the games, but nobody was ever talking about the addictive design of the game. Whether addiction exists, what the causes of it and stuff are, I mean, I'll leave that to the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the doctors. Addiction. That's a fine line there. When you talk about addictions, people understand them as substance addictions. You know, cocaine, heroin. When you have addiction, you have to have some significant uh, consequences as a result of that. Calling this an addiction is somewhat controversial because it may diminish the meaning of the other terms that we use. There is no physical withdrawal that you would suffer by comparison to substances. Are video games designed to be addicting? I could answer yes, and I'd be lying. I could answer no, and I'd be lying. I do put um, a lot of the, the blame on the gaming companies for doing this. When you make a video game and you're going to be successful, it's just like any business. You have to sell it. You have to have people play it, or you're not going to make money. Top tier video games you spend upwards of $15 million to bring to market. Um, I'm thinking I'm very happy. Excited. I'm thinking you're standing in my way of me going to play the game. So if you're designing a game to make people play, can you then make the stretch you're making it to be addictive? And I don't think that's the point. The point is to make something that's fun to play. And just like anything, anything can be taken too far. That's the point. If they weren't fun to play, no one would play them. What we use in psychiatry is the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. Is there any gaming um, addiction diagnosis in the DSM-4? No, there is not. A lot of these professionals, they've never coded software. They have no idea how it's made. They don't know anything about these games. The people that are working on things like the DSM-5, 
are very, very well-established psychiatrists, very prestigious psychiatrists. They don't have a lot of time, extra time, that they're going to be spending online playing games or exploring these, these worlds. They won't have the first-hand experiences that are often part of what informs therapists and they can relate and understand why something is, is significant. So how are they supposed to treat somebody who's addicted to a game when they don't even know anything about the computer games? We should look back to the history of why we have the textbook, the DSM. Um, it was designed, it was created as a research tool that psychiatrists, therapists, researchers could all be operating under the exact same definition of an illness when doing research into that illness. Somebody's got to start talking and telling what is happening because of these games. What is, what is it doing to people's lives? And this includes the gamer and the families and the friends and all the relationships. We need to have a concept of compulsive computer use in the DSM-5. Now the question is what format should it be put in there? Some people, such as I believe, it should be its own separate diagnosis. My guess is that, you know, whatever they might decide in 2012, maybe gaming will, could be classified under OCD, the short term for obsessive compulsive disorder. I agree that there does need to be more research and there has to be proof so that the public knows the effects that the games do have on a person's brain. I have no doubt there's going to be a diagnosis at some point. It may come from younger psychiatrists as they get older they become more well known but they're part of a culture where the uh, virtual reality is such a, a prominent part that they, they, they will be able to relate and be able to discuss it. same place. Didn't go back to school, which I had planned on doing. How much would you say you play daily? Um, probably at least about four hours a day. Maybe even more. If I wasn't playing video games, I probably would be taking better care of myself, making sure I'm eating right, make sure I'm exercising, probably accomplishing things. <laughs> kind of in the same boat that I was when I first started playing. You know, still single, still looking for, you know, that. Because I kind of feel like I am kind of living, living a selfish life. Like everything that I do, I do for myself, basically, from when I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed. And it would be kind of nice to be a part of something bigger than myself and starting a family and having more responsibilities. I kind of felt like I didn't really keep it in moderation very well, that I kind of let it get the best of me and I was not accomplishing the things I should have been accomplishing. If I was to do it all over again, I'd probably, I'd probably do it all over again, you know what I mean? Start playing the game from day one. Well, I think last time I talked to you, we were having some relationship yeah. issues about the game. But since then, even though like things seem like they've been really good as far as I went to school, got my master's, went back to work, really am proud of myself for doing that. In other ways, um, we're no longer together in a relationship. Uh, we don't live together anymore. We took about a house. And so I've, I've had to move out. So in some ways, my life is a lot different with her in the relationship. And I think a lot of it has to do with the game. But I think... You think the video game played a part in all that? I think the video game was a symptom. And it was a way for me maybe to deal with what I knew was not working. Any regrets during the process? I think that I, there were times when I should have logged off that I, I could have enjoyed different things more. There have been social events where I chose not to go to um, because of the game. Things with Noelle where I chose, and eh, I'm not really gonna put forth the effort. If she's not gonna put forth the effort, um, it has made it very easy for us to fall apart because I always had something else I could do. And so a lot of ways I think the relationship that was failing in real life for me, I was trying to uh, supplement with relationships with other people. I had fun, and it's escape. It helped me ignore the world. 
What's the biggest thing you like to ignore in your world? Uh, myself. I mean, there's times when I get in the game and I can focus and the whole, I just zone everything out to when I don't even feel my my legs when they hurt, etc. So it's like focus on the game and 10 hours later, whoa, where'd the day go? <laughs> That's how I feel about the games. It's like, okay, what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm gonna get in my wheelchair, I'm gonna get a couple buffalo guns, and go on safari. Oh wait, it's illegal to shoot animals. I can't roll through the African uh, steps. Nope, not going on safari. But now I'm going wild. He could go hunting for whatever he wants. What made you want to be a part of this documentary? Aside from saying, sure, Greg. Uh, well, because I, I love online games, specifically back from EverQuest, Dark Ages of Camelot, World of Warcraft. I think it's really cool. And I like the fact that it makes me feel a little bit better, maybe about myself. It's just a world free of judgment. It's not, it's not the world we all know. With the character, I know what my role is. With a character, I know what's expected of me. Sometimes, like in this life, as a father, as a realtor, as a member of society, as a male, as a role model, I don't really get the true idea of what's expected of me. Finish this sentence. If it wasn't for online games, I would... I'd have a few more days the rest of my life. <laughs> a few more days of reality. How many? If it wasn't for online games, I'd have more money in my bank account. Sometimes we like to beat ourselves up. We like to be in that negative place. Because then at least we can beat ourselves up over, I play too much. When we, do, when we are not a very healthy, confident human being. Would you change anything about your past gaming experience and the time you've invested? Yes, I wouldn't have played it late at nights on some occasions when my wife was going to bed. I should have given her a massage or laid down with her at times. I wouldn't say I lost my wife because of gaming, but I'd say that's a reason why we're not together. Was it worth it? No, it wasn't worth it. Why do you keep playing? Because it's easy. You uh, ha are the parents of, you know, obviously you're my mom. Yeah, but you're yeah. also, you know, Brian Ross and I happen to play video games quite a right, bit. Right, right, right. What would you say to the, to your sons about gaming in particular? Uh, well, to the gaming in particular, to those two. Uh, I would say that uh, they need to look at how much they, what they are losing by, by totally losing themselves in the games. What have you lost, do you think? That's kind of hard to admit to or th really think about some of the things. I lost a certain amount of respect with my wife, obviously, to be divorced. I guess I've just lost time and timing, you know, in my life. I don't feel like if maybe he reached the climax of what I've lost. The games are so unrealistic in general about life. And if that is all you are exposed to, how are you gonna find who you are and how you are to live your life? What do you think you've gained from gaming? What have I gained? I've gained a whole lot more understanding as to what it takes to maintain a healthy relationship. How I've changed is through what I have been missing by playing it. By doing a little of it, you enjoy it and you enjoy life. By doing a lot of it, you still learn your lesson. Maybe it wasn't a good thing that I played that much. But nonetheless, if you did enjoy it, why, why, why shut it off? If I really do play it for fun, like I keep telling myself, then it, sh then it should give me some really dope benefits. You know, I know that as life is short, I'm a man. I, you know, love life, love your family. You know, if, you're, if it's really fun, it should give you some benefits too. And it doesn't give me any other benefits other than 
you know, mental stimulation. Would you say that you're addicted to video games? I'd say I'm not addicted on the right on the edge because I am, I do feel some kind of dependence. So addiction, I guess, is just that wall that's in your way that may feel nice to sit up against it and get some shade cast on you from it and relax and take it easy. But you never know what's on the other side unless you're aware of it. So I guess an addiction for me is just a, it's a wall, it's a cloud, it's a block, and you don't know who you are without it. So no one should ever limit themselves. And if you stare in one direction for hours upon hours, you're limiting yourself. I want to play the game less, really. I don't want to play it as much anymore. I want to, I want to get all the normal successes, quit hiding from reality a little bit, I'm not playing the game so much because it hasn't been positive for me. I think it's just kind of like, just another addiction Brian has had, unhealthily, uncontrollably. And I always get, whenever I get off the game, you always get those glimpses of how much, how much more fun reality is, but, so reality is also painful, but we need, just like the game, we need to, we need to, um, Embrace reality, love life just as much as, uh, yeah, see, I'm always coming back to the game. Now there, you know, I, d I don't want to play the game anymore. And I, I need to stop playing the game. Why, why do you think you need to stop? Um, Is, do you feel like it's... I, I just think it's like dehumanizing me in a, in a certain sense, and it's not making me as ambitious as I was used to be in it, and it's slowed me down, and it's, um... It's lowered my self-confidence. So what? So I'm better at doing a 10v10 on a video game than interacting with 10 people in reality. <laughs> Some people, that's good, but that wasn't. that's not what we're here for, I don't think. I think we're here for each other. We're not here Want to connect online. Maybe in the future, but not right now. And not me, particularly. I need people. I need, I need 10v10. Of touch, not ten v ten taking out monsters and shit like that. Yeah. This is the best scene though, right here, it's relaxing. Someone mixing the drinks at the bar there. I like the house, but I don't like being here. I don't like seeing it, you know. Reminder, so. Uh, it's cool though, it's a good chapter, and I'm glad the chapter's over. Move on, man. Keep fighting, right? We call this the Game Bowl. And it holds CDs that people who have quit gaming have sent in to us. They break the CDs, sign it and date it, and put something on there like free forever, I'm free. And what they're doing is telling themselves and showing themselves that they are serious about leaving the games. I feel I need to tell parents this because they're not fully aware yet as to what these games can do to their children. I just beg you not to use these games as glorified babysitters and make it a part of your child's life. Don't let it become your child's life. What's what's going on with the old that happened last year? Um, we've got new people every day coming in, registering and sharing their story and 
they just automatically pick up and start helping each other. We've got a new website. It's much more user friendly. Um, one of the things that I wanted to happen with was, you know, to give people a place to go so they could find help for themselves and go for help whenever they needed it. Do you ever have a hard time finding a balance? Balance? There is no balance. Well, lately there hasn't been a lot of balance. I don't play often because it does take over your life if you let it. I used to play World of Warcraft. Two years of my life thrown away. <laughs> for some people, it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. It's like, okay, I have to work, I have to eat, I have to sleep, but how much time do I have for gaming? Play games? Well, if I wanted to, you know, kill the same thing over and over and over again, I'd get a job. <laughs> no, don't touch it. Never, never touch it. No, no online game. Everybody needs to escape, but, you know, use a form of escape that's not going to make your life worse than it was before. I don't think it's just about video games. I don't think the problems that people say that video games cause are just about video games. I think the problem is man, humans, and that's just a vice. But you get rid of video games and there's a million other vices you can choose from. I think it's healthy to play video games. I think it forces you to think in new and unique and different ways. Games can cause friendships. They can end friendships. They can cause romantic relationships. They can end romantic relationships. And I think it's just another walk of life or another venue in life that you have to exhibit control and there's a responsibility to it. There's, there's such thing as too much. If there was something you could say to Sean, Thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, I mean, I still, I'm still mad at him. I mean, I see gamers, I go, that's my son. That is my son, and that's why I care about them and want them to do better, because it's like, there's my son. If his death can help others, that's what I want. I don't want him to die in vain. I don't want him to die for nothing. If you have a family, and if you have an awesome, cool wife, <laughs> Um, embrace them, love them. When it's no longer a game and you're no longer playing for fun, it's time to turn it off and do something else. If you have the ability, get out and do other things. Um, go play disc golf. Don't let the, the design of your character design you. It's only up to you to, to decide that you want to change your life and, and up to you to take control and do it. Moderation is the key. <laughs>just like the people I work with the whole kind of team environment there everyone's kind of working together and it's not so much your work history or what degree you have but who you're gonna be at the store so, so who are you gonna be at the store I'm Ross the goofy guy I've been playing it probably still really religiously probably I would say more than I work which is lame playing the game I think is self-destructive because it really doesn't do squat I'm so frustrated why I keep coming back. Yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't think I could make it on my own and live on my own. And you know, and, and I am and yeah, I can make it on my own, dude. And that is that's neat. I got my own neighbors, I got my own dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? of uh, relationship before. I definitely used the game back then as an escape. And looking at where I'm at now, I mean, I still play, but I don't play for the same reasons. I was a little annoyed at first, but the more I talked about it with him, 
he discussed how it was his escape and, and I realized, yeah, we all have our escapes. So I told him, all right, well, we don't have kids right now, but when we have kids, it's gonna, there's gonna be a cutoff time. Going into it, I set the expectation. This is what I like, but I don't like to watch TV. Yeah. And I do. We do, but she loves it, <laughs> loves it. That's my advice. I kind of feel like me and Ross are still in the same boat that we were in six years ago almost, it seems like. Not like things are bad though, I mean, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. How does, how do things look for you in the love department? You're still... I know, I still want the same things, you know what I mean? I want to have a family and do all that, but at the same time, there's a lot of other things I want to do. I mean, you can't really like make plans, you know what I mean? Because you never know what's going to happen, so it's just kind of, like I said, enjoy every day. Do you enjoy every day? Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to. I think my journey ended beautifully. Mm. <laughs> I guess maybe I'm a person that likes to bring balance to everyone around me. Even though at times I'm not the most balanced person. And ultimately, you know, I'd like to look back at my life and know that, that I affected this world somehow. I'll die with some small bit of a legacy or of a story or something.
he said no Just understand at times. Oh, that's just how life feels. Well, I turn my head from her, and my heart gets cold. It's time to move on, cause it's hurting stuff. Getting old I'm repeating myself Time and again well, Baby, I'd do it again Well, I guess